So I got a Arians 30 inch. It's got a Briggs and Stratton. I believe it's a 1450 series and it has the Nikki style carburetor on it. They have the bowl at the bottom with the two bolts there and there is a plastic piece right in there. So basically they run their float assembly right there. And then they have this piece here. The O-ring goes in here and it's got a big gasket on it. So it looks a little something like this. So essentially your fuel comes in here, goes into this area here, and that's where this little O-ring here makes a seal. So if you have a leaky Nikki carburetor, it could either be a leaky needle valve or it may be a leaky O-ring there. And then this big gasket here, multi O-ring kind of deal, that also serves as your bowl gasket. So that seals your bowl and it seals all these little ports and everything else. So these, in my opinion, are one of the worst designed carburetors ever. We can see here, Nikki, and they don't have any adjustments that you can do to them. Everything is fixed. So this video is essentially going to be how to fix surging on a machine with one of those Nikki carburetors, and it's super simple. So I'll let you hear what it sounded like when we were running it. So you can hear that the engine was revving up and down and normally when that happens it's just running lean and sometimes if it has the Honda style Kohler carburetor you can go and ream out or bore out the low speed idle circuit jet and you can make that bigger which then richens your idle and if you guys want to see a video of how I do that click on the top right of your screen I'll link to my video of how to fix surging on one of those style carburetors. There's no adjustments on this carb again you can't change anything the only thing you can do is adjust the high speed idle right there. Now the majority of carburetors do have a low speed idle jet somewhere. Again on the Honda ones they're going to be somewhere up here so you're going to see like a little brass or plastic jet you'll be able to pop that out and you'll be able to bore that out and make it a little bit richer. On these Nikki carburetors the low speed idle jet is right down in there so that little brass piece down there. So what I'm going to do is take my micro drill bits right here. Basically I'm going to go in there probably with like an 18 or a 20 thousandths of an inch drill bit and make that hole right there larger and that should take care of the surging uh, it should fire up and run perfectly so this is a clean carburetor I did pressure test it once everything was together and on these you have to put the plastic piece down there make sure it's seated put your bowl on and then you can go ahead and pressure test it because again air can leak between this little o-ring here and air can also leak through the needle jet so again these carburetors in my opinion are some of the worst carburetors on the market so again I just have my little chuck here now you guys can probably see a little bit of brass shavings in there so this is gonna cause a little bit of debris so what I would recommend is holding this carburetor upside down like this and then drilling it while it's upside down that way all the debris should fall down and not back into the carburetor now your main jet on the carburetor is right here it's a little brass piece we can see that's perfectly clean and free of debris. So if you go on Google and you type in why is my machine surging, somebody might say, well, it's running lean and you're gonna have to, you know, richen it up. And I've seen some videos where people just go and they make that hole bigger. You don't wanna do that. You have to understand how these carburetors work. So that little jet right there, guys, that's what's called your low speed idle jet. That's what runs your machine when it's just idling. Now that can mean it's idling on low speed and that can mean that it's idling on high speed. This jet over here, that's called your main jet, that's what meters the fuel going into your engine when your machine is under full load. So if you're driving your snowblower and you're throwing some snow, or let's say you have a go-kart and you're full throttle and you're driving down the road, that means your engine's under a load and it's going to be pulling fuel through the main. So again, main jet, full load, low speed idle jet, just idling. So I'm going to throw this carburetor back together. And uh, like I said, guys, this machine ran, it just surged. So that's what we're going to be fixing with this little trick here. Now to uninstall and reinstall the carburetor studs on Onto this machine you guys can see they look like Torx heads on them so what you need is an E5 socket and an E5 is essentially just a female Torx so that goes on to your end there and then it'll allow you to take those studs out and put them back on so I'm gonna hook up my fuel line and I'm probably going to just run it like this just to make sure that the issue of the surging is gone and if the low speed idle jet needs to be bored out more then it's just easy I can just pull the studs and drill it out bigger okay so Fuel's on, choke's on, it's on high throttle. Okay, so it's surging now. You can hear how it's revving like this.
with the choke slightly on, the idle smooths out. So that means we gotta richen it up more. Okay, so we could hear that when the carburetor was running with the choke off, it was surging a little bit. The revs were kind of erratic going up and down. When we turn the choke on slightly, two clicks over, what that does is it limits the amount of air going in, thus richening your fuel mixture. So it creates more suction throughout the carburetor. So I'm gonna fool around with this a little bit more, see if we can take care of that surging. Now, surging can also be caused by an air leak in between your engine and your carburetor, but I know that's not the case because this machine ran and perfectly with the aftermarket carb installed, but that is something that you could look at. Okay, so I've now moved up to a 32 thousandths of an inch. That seems pretty big to me, but we're just gonna try it, see what it does. Worst case scenario, I can always go and get another carburetor. Basically, if this doesn't work, there's not much more that I can do to this carburetor. I've ultrasonic cleaned it twice, and like I said, if it keeps surging, then that means that there's something somewhere inside of this carburetor that my ultrasonic cleaner is just not cleaning out. So again, it's just a case of getting the fuel mixture right. So I'm gonna throw this back together, take it outside again, fire it up, see how it sounds. the auger engaged, which means the main is good, but there's a little sputtering every now and then. That's 32 thousandths of an inch. So at 32 thousandths of an inch on the low speed idle jet, we can hear a major improvement. It does sputter every now and then, but when I engage the auger and put it under a load and it starts pulling a little bit of fuel through the main jet, it runs perfectly smooth. So I believe I'm gonna go slightly bigger. Now, I don't wanna go too much because if I do that, what'll end up happening is then it'll run rich. Now I might be able to go ahead and put like a hotter plug in or a colder plug, but I really don't wanna start messing around with spark plugs. I'd rather just get the carburetor issue solved. And I think what I'm gonna do is just go ever so slightly, maybe 34 thousandths of an inch. But again, this is very much a trial and error process doing these mixture adjustments, especially on a carburetor that has no adjustment on it. At least on the Honda Kohler designed ones, they're right here. So you have a Phillips screw, you take out the idle screw, you pop out your little jet, and you don't have to even remove the carburetor. You can go drill it out, pop it back in, and you can make an adjustment under a minute. But with the way this is, you have to remove the carburetor, disassemble the carb, drill out your jet, and then reassemble the carb, reinstall the carb, and then test it out again. So I'm gonna drill this out again, probably to about 34 thousandths of an inch, and I'll bring you back. Four thousandths of an inch on the low idle speed was all it needed. So it's hard to believe I had to go that much, but you can hear it for yourself. So you guys just heard how it ran absolutely perfectly, does not have the sputter. So that's been fixed. So the number for this was 34 thousandths of an inch on that low idle speed jet. But that's how you fix a surging on a Briggs & Stratton engine that uses a Nikki carburetor. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. So that's it for today's video. We were able to get that Briggs & Stratton on the Arian snowblower running good, and we took care of the surging issue. I wouldn't necessarily say this is a quick and easy job because technically speaking, it's not quick. You do have to remove the carburetor, disassemble the carburetor, drill out the jet, reassemble the carb, reinstall the carb, and then test it. And you may make slow improvements over time as you continue to richen and richen the jet up. As I stated, you don't really wanna just go and bore out the hole to a much larger diameter because then you could be too rich and then the carb is essentially worthless. So you do want to take it step by step and gradually increase the pilot jet size. And not only is this a process of trial and error, but you also 
have to have a micro drill bit set. So if you don't have one of those, then it's gonna be really hard to complete this task. But at the end of the day, we were able to get that Arians running good. If you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week. So be sure to come on back next week, check the channel out for new content. And as always guys, thanks for watching.